When you want to start making more money, we need to start thinking about how we can get time back. That is your most valuable asset. That's why you end up getting employees. So you're not doing the thing that takes time. So that computer is going to help you with that. I have been using an Alienware laptop since we started 3D printing in November of 2024. How we've gotten this far, I don't know without me throwing it out the window. I was seriously taking many hours away from my soul and just slicing and coloring and all of the things. I am a 20 windows open type gal. I need a lot of RAM in my life. Now I'm gonna show you all the components that we chose. Side note, I'm not sponsored by any of these brands, <laughs> but I wouldn't say no. Now this is not for a nerd who knows how to build a PC. This is for Miss Sally bakes her goodies at home and has no idea what PC even stands for. Personal computer. I'm here to show you what's possible and I'm here to show you why it's so necessary. I also am going to recommend certain components either upgraded or downgraded depending on your goals for your PC. What? That's right. <laughs> Not every PC build is the same. Not everybody's goals are the same. You wanna be a gamer, you wanna be an editor. You're gonna have maybe a slightly different core processor. I don't know. We're gonna talk about it briefly, not too much. We're gonna do a voiceover on how you're gonna put them together. And then bada bing, bada boom, you've got yourself the most banging high performance PC that money can buy. Cause I tell you what, you go to Best Buy to try to buy yourself a high performance PC, go into the internal parts and look at them and see what you're really paying for. Don't be scared. We're gonna do it very, very easy and smooth. And I'm not a level 99 nerd, you guys. Have I built PCs my whole life? No. Did I know you could build a computer 10 years ago? No, but my mentor, my level 99 hubs has been in this for like 40 years. So he, you know, I got a good, I got a good mentor. So I'm going to go ahead and share that information with you guys. And hopefully you find some value. Um, if you are new here, my name is Jen. This is Hamill's house of 3d prints. We print like crazy around here. Uh, we're a little bit new at it. You know, if you didn't catch that, we've only been printing since November. Um, Oh my God, that's in two months. Holy crap, it's almost been a year. Yeah, so I still think I'm new. I, I mean, I am new. I, I, I mean, I haven't been 3D printing longer than, you know, anyways. So we're gonna jump right into this video. Okay, you guys, so we are ready to build our computer. Where do we start? We wanna start with the processor. That is the brain of the computer. Now, depending on what your goals are for your computer, depends on which process you're gonna want. You're gonna wanna look at things like core and thread count. Just to keep things simple, if you want a game, go high gigahertz, low core. If you want a video edit and slice and have lots of tabbies open, we're gonna go high core and high gigahertz. We went with the AMD Ryzen 9900 XT. I lied, there's no T at the end. <laughs> AMD 9900X. This is going to be one of the biggest money hungry components of your entire build next to the GPU. Now this one was $450 and this is the um, AMD brand. Now real quickly, side note, I am not sponsored by anybody. Did I already say that? Now, once you have your processor figured out, you know which brain you're picking, that's going to cut all the motherboards down into what you can actually use, what's compatible. Now we wanted to make sure we stayed under under $200. So it dropped maybe about a hundred, you know, motherboards we could have used with that processor down to about 10. Motherboards can go as high as a thousand dollars. You don't really want to go under a hundred dollars, but if you're gonna go over 300, you wanna make sure that your CPU is going to be able to keep up with that mother motherboard. Keep it over 100, we wanted to keep ours under 200. I think ours came in at around 139 and we wanted it white, so that's why we chose this one. Next, you're going to need a cooler. You're going to need to cool down everything in the computer. Now, our cooler, we wanted it to be white and we didn't want to break the bank either, so ours was about 36 bucks and we want this white one. Now. If you decide on a cooler that's in the hundreds of dollars, you're not really getting more of an effective cooler. You're just kind of paying for the value of not hearing it. So keep that in mind. Next, we're gonna need some RAM. Now the RAM is your memory and it's also what is really 
what you need if you want things to be snappy, if you want things to be able to be quick, like lots of window tabbies open. I am a RAM hungry girl. I like lots of RAM. Now, because we went with the motherboard that we have, we needed to use the certain RAM that we chose, which was the Corsair DDR5. Now I think it was around a hundred bucks for 32 gigabytes. I'm already pushing that with, with like eight tabs open and everything else that I'm doing, I'm already pushing that 32 gigs. So we do want to upgrade to 128 soon, but that is just what we started with. Um, again, we will leave links down below for everything that we're talking about. Um, but we're going to go ahead and move on to the storage. Now for storage, we started with two terabytes. Again, we are probably going to upgrade it in the future, but that is just enough for us to get by for now. We went with the NVMe just because it's the newest and we were we're kind of just on that trend already. So uh, that's why I'm just going to segue into the GPU that we got uh, was also the the new a new GPU we did not buy used. Now, if you want to buy your graphics unit or your graphics card used, by all means, go for it. It's not a big deal. The reason we went new was just because we were just kind of spoiling ourselves since we built it new anyways. Um, Luis's last card was the 3090, uh, RTX 3090. So this time we got the NVIDIA GE Force, uh, 50, 5070, was it 5070? I was right. It's 5070. Um, so that is the, the graphics card that we did get. You are also going to need a power supply. When it comes to the power supply, make sure you're choosing something that has a 10 year warranty. Corsair is a great brand. We always stick with EVGA gold or platinum. Now, their wattage matters. So make sure you get something that's going to not have to be upgraded if you ever wanna upgrade parts of your PC. If you're gonna get an off brand, there are chances it's going to be noisy and it's gonna break early. So definitely go for the better brand when it comes to the power supply. Gold or platinum, you can't go wrong with that. And the very last component that you're going to need is a little power button. So that is it for everything that you need in order to build your high performance PC. Now we're going to go ahead and jump into how we place these components together. Um, super easy peasy. And I'm going to go ahead and walk you through that right now. All right, you guys, we are pulling out the motherboard now. Here it is. Here is where you're going to put your CPU, your DDR5s, your graphics card, your storage. This is the entire plate that houses pretty much everything that you're putting your components on. There's a little hole there. That's what you're going to attach your PC to. Now this is the CPU, you guys. This little tiny chip is going to go right on top of this little square you see right here. This square is being held down by this little latch. You're just going to pull it out, pull it over, and lift up this top latch of the cover. Now, this little area right here, no matter what, you just do not wanna to touch that, okay? Now on the bottom here, there are going to be little notches right here where you can see my finger. And then up in the top left-hand corner, you're gonna see a little triangle. Now what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to take that triangle and you're gonna to wanna to match it to the top left-hand corner of your processor. I'm just closing this so nobody touches it while I'm grabbing the CPU. Now you see the top left hand corner, there's a little circle. That's going to be where you place it ever so gently on top of that triangle that we saw earlier. Um, now doing this with nails was very, very difficult. I don't recommend, but yet uh, we got it done. So here I am just trying to place that circle right above that triangle. And then you just ever so gently drop it into place and you're done. There it is. Then you just close the lid. Oh, small fingers trying to grab it. <laughs> Close the lid, then push down this bar. You're going to need to push it down a, with a little bit of strength because it doesn't want to quite go. Push it under that lever, and then that black piece on top should just pop off, and you are just ready to go. And you have successfully installed the processor. Now we are going to go ahead and get our cooling fan out. You're going to want to make sure that you have all the components. It comes with different, you know components based on the motherboard that you chose. So you're not gonna use everything. We're just gonna unscrew these little brackets on each side of the processor, and then we're going to place the fan right on top. So there's these little pink nubs. Stick one on each of the corners, and then you're going to put these bars, these brackets, um, basically sitting right on top. Now, the instructions that come with your fan should tell you how to do all of this. 
and uh, there's the screws that came with it and you're just going to screw the brackets on top of these little you know pink nubbies then you're going to take your mx4 thermal paste or the tf7 that came with the fan and you're going to put just the size of a grain of rice right on top of that little placard where we put our processor now you don't need too much this is kind of like one of those to glue or not to glue in the 3d printing community uh, it's kind of like that in the computer community so it's, everybody has their own ways you're going to peel that sticker off and place it right on top of that little thermal paste that we placed in there and then we're just going to go back and forth and screw these screws and mount them in now I was having some trouble because it was hard to see and they weren't quite grabbing, but eventually they were able to stick. Next, you're going to take your SD card. We ended up having this stick because it had our windows, so we went on, went, went on ahead and used this one. Now you're gonna unscrew these little panels and be careful because there are little sticky tabs underneath, so you don't forget that. Just slip this right in and then you're just gonna push it down and depending on the motherboard, ours just has this little flip that you just flip and it just stays there. Some of you guys might have to screw it. Now this, you just peel that off, stick it right on top and then you're going to screw the top back on to hold that SSD card in place. Next we have the RAM and we're gonna go ahead and place these right here on the side of the, uh, the cooler push down on both sides and make sure you really push them in. These were actually kind of hard for me. Um, they do need a little bit of strength. Now back to the fan, we wanted to do this after we did the other two things just to make it a little bit easier. But this little wire, you're just gonna push these wires into the holes, give it a quick snap, they'll pop in very easily, you'll know that they're in. And then you're just gonna wrap these wires completely around so they fit tight and snug. They're actually gonna snap right into place just like that. Snap them on both sides and then you want to make sure that both fans are facing the same exact direction. You don't want the air to be fighting against each other. You want it to be one fluid motion. And then you are almost done, you guys. We are getting right along. Now here is the red case that we piece that we printed for the rig. It's in two parts because we didn't have a printer that was big enough to do both pieces, but we now have a printer big enough to do both pieces. So we are gonna reprint this entirely. But for now, we ended up just gluing it together and using it for, for now. So we put in the power supply and you really want to do this first because all of these wires that have to get organized on the top must be underneath the motherboard and if you try to put the motherboard on your rig first and then try to deal with the power supply you're just going to have to take it all apart again so just do this part first then you're going to go ahead and brace your power your motherboard to the rig just like so and then plug in your P your power button. So there are four little clips. You're gonna to wanna to do three and four, A and B. You want red to be in number three. So that's where you plug it in. Run this wire through your PC, however it looks, and then pop it through the hole and there is your power button. Last but not least, we are opening up the GPU. This is the funnest part, the most exciting part for most nerds, I guess. Pull this little safety rubber piece off. There it is, all pretty. And then you're just gonna place it right on your motherboard like so. I couldn't do it at that angle. I had to do it at this angle and it was quite difficult. So don't, don't feel discouraged if it's a little hard at first. It just takes a little bit of practice. Take your eight pin from the power supply and plug it right on in and we are done, you guys. This is the computer build in its full glory. Let's go ahead and turn on this bad boy and see how it goes. All right, moment of truth. So round two, we did end up reseeding the RAM and that was the issue. So after powering it up for the second time, we had success. And there you have it, guys. So there you guys have it. That was how we built our high performance PC for our 3D printing business. If you found this video useful, please give me a thumbs up. Let me know your comments, suggestions, or whatever it is you wanna tell me down in the comments. I would love to hear from you guys. We did this so you guys could feel confident building your own computer with zero knowledge. This is 
not something that a lot of people learn about or know about. And I think that's unfortunate because you really are wasting your dollars when you go and buy pre-built PCs at the store. So do yourself a favor, get nerdy with it, create something awesome. It does not have to look like this. It could look like so many different things that the possibilities are endless. So thank you guys once again for watching us. If you are new here, feel free to subscribe. We have an entire vlog series showing you what we're printing every week, as well as a podcast series, uh, giving you our expertise and experience as new 3d printer, uh, printers (laughs) printers. <laughs> so thank you guys so much again. We'll see you guys in next week's video and happy printing. Bye for now.